Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Scents. Today I'm going to be featuring a fragrance that I've been curious about for a while now. It came out in 2019, so it's been out not quite a year. It's from the perfumist, who I don't know a ton about, but I have a great respect for his work. I watch actually a YouTube talk that he has, and I'll link that in the description so that you can check that out. Jan Vaznier, or Vaznier, seems to really know the fragrance or perfume industry. The fragrance itself is one of those that gets views on both sides of the spectrum, whether it's great, it's a niche quality, it's amazing to, I don't know why anyone would wear this. The fragrance I'm referring to is Machino's Toy Boy, kind of a galvanizing fragrance in the community, so I don't know anything about it. Literally, I've never smelled it, I've never watched a review about it, so I'm coming from ground zero. Sometimes that's the best place to come from, so when we return, we're gonna check out Machino's Toy Boy, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. That's right, today we're gonna look at the Teddy Ruxpin of the fragrance world. <laughs> and that is Machino Toy Boy for Men. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration, 3.4 ounce or 100 ml bottle. Again, an unusual presentation. It is that of the shape of a teddy bear. It is black, some thoughts behind that, but interested to see that actual presentation. And then of course, most interested to see what that fragrance is like. So let's check out first the presentation. I'm not really a teddy bear kind of guy, but it's kind of cool. It's made of glass, of course, mostly, except the, the actual lid is a hard form of plastic. It's very heavy, probably know in watching my videos. I like something that feels like it's made of quality, but the biggest thing is that smell is still hanging in the air from when I sprayed the two or three sprays for the presentation. I'm getting a blast of some rich, rich ingredients. Now you can tell this is an eau de parfum without question. First of all, it smells very rosy. It's like a, a dark, almost moist tube rose. It's very rich, probably a better word, very a better adjective to describe it is a very rich tube rose. It's super clean. It's really nice. Like if you walked into someone's home or a shop in the mall or wherever and you smelled this, you would be like, wow, what is that smell? I gotta know what that is. It doesn't smell like a typical clean air freshener that's trying to mimic or emulate some other kind of smell that appears in nature. It's a very rich, rosy, but also dark, definitely within the family of amber. So let's take a look at some of the notes in Machino's Toy Boy. In the top, you've got Italian bergamot, pink pepper, pear, Elemi resin and Indonesian nutmeg. Heart notes of clove, rose absolute, flax blossom, and magnolia. Resting on a base of Haitian vetiver, amber max, and silkalide. Amber Max, of course, is the amber-like synthetic aroma chemical that is going to appear in the new Eros EDP. And silkalide also belongs in that family of like amber musk and animalic. The base serves two purposes, as a fixative to bind everything together and also to make it rich, darken it up, and of course aroma chemicals last forever, so it adds to the longevity as well as the projection of a fragrance. And I can tell you this much, those three sprays, they're still in the air, like I, it's still right here. I almost don't have to use a tester strip, but I want to see how, what that open is like. Atomizer is really nice, shoots out a bunch of juice at once in a nice straight stream, so that's nice. Wow. 
I always have such great respect for perfumists and perfume houses that can use a note that is a little bit galvanizing and that is the note of, of rose. A rose absolute of course is going to be the richest portion of the cold pressed or steam pressed or however they process it and this is a rose heavy fragrance but it's almost like the best type of rose. Rose gets a bad rap because there are so many synthetic rose smells out there. You think of Avon, you think of old ladies washing their hands with their rose soap, spraying on their, their rose hairspray, things like that. That's not the kind of rose that's in Machino's Toy Boy. This is very close to a like almost like a lovely type of fragrance that, that's edging niche quality. Just straight off the top, the thing that impresses me most about Machino's Toy Boy and having smelled it on a tester strip is just how incredibly clean. It's such a brisk, clean smell that also has that dark, rich rose absolute in it. And then of course, it's got somewhat of a floral sensibility too. Some of those statements that have been thrown out there in the flotsam and jetsam of social media kind of ping my consciousness sometimes. And I do remember someone saying that Machino is definitely a unisex fragrance. You could call it unisex. You could wear it no matter whether you're male or female in terms of sex. Definitely got a darker, richer masculinity to it, a masculine presence to it as well. Um, probably not necessarily in the open so much as in the dry down. So having said that, I'm gonna try it out on the skin and kind of give you my final thoughts on it. But I can tell you this much, I really like it. And I'm really glad that I like it because it's not super expensive, but it's not super inexpensive. It's still very, very accessible because it's a designer fragrance. It's designed to be that way. I'm really happy that as a blind buy, it's really good quality. Okay, wow. So. It's tremendously different on skin. And I know it's like I act surprised every time I do this, but it's just amazing to me how different when you put your nose to a linear strip than when you put your nose to your you know, skin after you've sprayed it on skin. It's like the difference between a flat plane and then you add that, that Y axis to it or Z axis or whatever that makes it 3D plane. It's definitely deeper and darker and richer. So some of that tube, some of that rose goes away in in the mid to the dry down. So you get a little bit of that, a little bit of animalic, but it's more like amber rich in the way that patchouli is like a rich earthy, like a dark patchouli mixed with that rose absolute. So the magnolia and the rose give it a little bit of a floral sensibility, but primarily what I get out of this is a very rich, clean fragrance. I keep using that word clean. There's something super almost soapy about Machino. With the LME resin, the nutmeg, and the clove, you get a slight resinous, kind of a rough hewn resinous in your nose as you're smelling it. Kind of breaks apart a little bit the magnolia and the rose together. And then of course the amber max and the silk Elide are giving you that deep dark rich fixative that allows it to be very dark and well worn in terms of your longevity. And it's projecting like a beast too. So it's definitely going to be a banger in terms of when to wear it. This is very, very rich. So obviously if you're in, in inside all day, you can definitely wear it in a cooler environment. This is going to be more for kind of like spring, fall, like the cooler parts of the weather, like springtime when it starts to cool down, definitely cool nights. I wouldn't wear this in high heat. What will happen in high heat is this will become extremely like almost syrupy sweet very cloying, very heavy. If that's something that you like, then power on, brother. But I can't do it. It might be too much for those around you if you're in close proximity to a lot of people, but definitely cooler weather and inside weather. That's cool if you're stuck inside in AC all day. This is a just a first impression and unboxing. I can't speak to the longevity. However, my intuition is telling me this is gonna last a, a good long while being an eau de parfum and also having such, you know, aroma chemicals like Silk Glide and Amber Max in it definitely going to add to that longevity and certainly to the projection. As far as I'm concerned, excellent fragrance, very pleasantly surprised. I love florals myself. I don't wear a ton of florals, but I like when it's done in a way that strays away from the typical. It's riding that fine line between masculine and feminine in the open when it dries down. I think it's definitively masculine when it dries down and definitely can be worn with that in mind. Just as much as this is kind of riding a fine line between unisex and masculine, I feel like you could also dress this up. So you could wear this in a formal situation 
just as you could wear it casually. This is one of those fragrances though that is, it's definitely going to make a statement about who you are. So you have to wear it with confidence. So it's just like buying something that is conspicuous consumption that, that gets you attention. I'm not going to say that this will garner you compliments, it may, but it will get you attention and you want, to, you want it to be for the right reasons. So if you're going to wear Machino's Toy Boy in public, you definitely want to wear it with confidence in mind. Price point is still very good. You can get this between 65 and 75 bucks. You can get this uh, with the discount at Fragrance X, which is where I got mine. And I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing your own Machino Toy Boy. All right, guys, that's it for my first look at unboxing and first look at Machino's Toy Boy, the Eau de Parfum. Extremely impressed. Again, I left a link in the description of Jan Vaznier or Vaznier's role in perfumery. He gives kind of a talk on it. It's really interesting. I, I advise you to check that out if you have interest in his background or in the mystery or art of perfumery might be something you want to look at. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my first impressions and unboxing today. As always, thank you so much for your support of my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.